We back, we back, we back, we back, we back. I'm sitting in here with, um, I'm going to say it like this, nigga, like, um, one of the dopest MCs on the planet Earth, nigga. Like that. How about that? How about this? Nigga sitting next to me on the left, this nigga was dope when I was whack. <laughs> you know what? You got to be a real one to be able to admit some shit like that. Uh, go ahead. Introduce yourself to the blue crowd. What's up, family? It's your boy, Opio, representing Souls of Mischief, Hieroglyphics, Oakland, California native. Yeah. Hey, nigga, um, what was the first rap you ever wrote? Damn, that's a crazy ass question. How old was you? And how did it go? I don't even remember what it, what it was, to be honest. I mean, shit. I mean, damn, it's going back. Probably, I was probably like eight years old or something. Damn! I want to say like second grade. And you was just like, man, I'm about to bust. Basically. Who was your favorite rapper? Man, I was, I was loving Run DMC to keep it real. You know what I mean? That was like. Which one? I was, I was leaning more towards DMC to keep oh, it real. Oh, shit. But I love, I love them both. You know, they were, they were some of the most incredible performers that I've ever seen. You know what I mean? And I just know. like, so, yeah. They used to whip it down. Yeah, hell yeah. Did they inspire you to want to be an opera? I mean, they were so far ahead of the game. At that time, I was just in awe. Oh, yeah, I could never even imagine doing something like that. Jam Master J was up there. Just they was they were incredible. They were incredible. That's the difference, though. Like when you um, back when we came, uh, I want, I'm not gonna uh, see. I'm much younger than all these people here. Everybody in this building on the show tonight. Like I was like a baby when they was like listening to run dmc i wasn't like you know i was just a little baby so but but back to keep it for real like back then like mcs and shit they would seem like it's like something like you couldn't even like get get to that level nowadays when you see niggas rapping and your niggas is like oh man like that's i could do that too you wouldn't even try it though that's like people don't even understand. That's like my whole fight against struggle rappers now, because like nowadays any nigga will like just call himself a rapper now. Back then, niggas would be scared to even like try to rap. Speaking of which, how was it when y'all first went out to New York? How did they act when you was y'all was like, now we gonna show you how the West Coast smack kids? I heard uh, Fred Fire Fetty had said something to y'all. It was it was love, you know what I mean? Cause I had. Traveled to New York before, just like with my dad, and just hung out. But, but, but I went with. Um, we went, and we was already, you know, we was kind of connected. My man Curious George hung out with him a lot at the um, the Gavin. We was at the Gavin, you know what I mean? That was like my fam. So, yeah, it was like a mu like the same thing as the New Music Seminar, kind of, but on the in San Francisco. So like. Yeah, I feel like what it was for was for like radio. I mean, when we was when we went to the Gavin, we wasn't even signed or nothing. We didn't have no idea of the music business. You know, we just was hungry and wanted to get on and put music out. You know, because we felt like we had something to offer. Did y'all have anything recorded when you first started kicking at the Gavin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we had stuff recorded for sure, but we was you know we was most of the time when we were at. We was just jumping in ciphers, freestyling and starting our own ciphers, and you know. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, shit. You should know what a cipher is, goddammit. But you know, it's just cats kind of huddle up in a in a circle and just start say a verse, and the next homie kicks one, and then you know, it just kind of goes around, and you just keep keep going, and other people with yeah, just like a blunt, you know what I mean, and uh, and. Other people would kind of get inspired and jump in, and you know, Curious George hopped in with us, and you know, it was, it was, it was. It was we had a lot of fun at the Gavin. We was cool with with George. So when we went to New York, we had family out there. Stretch and Bobito was our folks, and you know, Daddy Reef, Dante Ross, all these guys. You know, they was they was taking us around and really treating us with love, especially Curious George. Him and his whole his whole crew. You know what I mean? I mean, I can't. It was there was people, but I can't think of anybody like 
that anybody would know. You know what I'm saying? But like just in a club or something and we would be like rapping with each other and somebody would be like, yo, I'm trying to see what's up. Because, you know, it was a competition thing. This was before we were out, though. You know what I mean? So we weren't really we had I think Burnt was out, which was a B-side to Mr. Dabalina on Dell. That was out. So we had some, but a lot of cats didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was that was that was love. Dell showed us he gave us he gave us the the pass and we ran with it, you know, for sure. I will say that this nigga right here has been uh what I know from what I heard before I even like met niggas and shit, he was known as the uh the crew killer. Like he was like, that's the homies and shit, but when this nigga got on, it was like, uh oh. <laughs> this was like, uh oh. Oh, 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 they go, oh, 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 like sometimes they had to put you last, though, huh? Like this thing was the cleanup. <laughs> no, you know what I'm talking about, nigga, you know. I mean, was, there was a lot of strength what? within the crew. Yeah, you know, so. but it's always a, a competitive, you know, a competition within the crew, huh? Friendly, friendly. Friendly competition. Yeah, yeah. Friendly fire. <laughs> <laughs> friendly fire, if you will. <laughs> All right, how about this one? Um... This is my last one. I'm going to let you go eat and do your stuff before the show. Um, um, what, what was this one? Some people, including myself, tend to think, much respect to Biggie and stuff, but I noticed when Biggie came out that um might have borrowed some of y'all patterns and shit. Shit, man. Uh-oh. That's that's Uh-oh. sacrilege, man. Yeah. R.I.P. to the great B.I.G., yeah. man. Okay, don't be love it. love don't that guy. Love that guy. I mean, I know that you know he was he was checking for for he was a fan of a student of rap just like you know we were, and so he was he had his ear and was listening to a lot of stuff. So I know he was tapped in with Casual. He rapped over some of his uh, like Casual's instrumentals and stuff, and just so he knew exactly who y'all was. And I heard I, I mean just as a student of rap to hear somebody from out there. Because y'all came up with a whole ass um, style. Yeah, but I wouldn't really say that, you know, Big bit us. You know what I mean? Body. Like, not. He say any bit. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, he did rhyme over a casual instrumental. You know what I mean? And I, know, and I know he was definitely casual. He was like, yo, he got some. He got spit. Anybody that was ever heard casual would be like, yo, that guy is amazing. You know, but he was big. Is was. Literally, I've seen him perform. I watched him at the Gavin, and he's right. he was in, incredible. incredible. You know what I mean? That guy. He opened up for him in San Diego back in the day, Mr. Jamin Cox. So, you know what I mean? That's that's a very politically correct way to answer that that thing right there. As the great ones know how to, you know, just be like, yeah, you know, okay. But um, I'm just giving credit where it's due, and you got to, you got to let niggas know, give people their flowers while they're here, and should let niggas know that they did great things, and and just as big, big as a great, is a great, y'all niggas is pioneers. Let's give it up for Opio Lindsay right here, the mighty hieroglyphics, the mighty souls of mischief on blue. Last thing before I get out, you got something coming up, what's up? I'm working with my man Breakbeat Lou, who is like the guy that if you ever seen an Ultimate Beats and Breaks record, he's the guy behind that whole thing. He's the brainchild behind that. And just an incredible human being all around. Uh, such He has so much history and knowledge about hip-hop. So being around him has been beneficial for me. That's, yeah, I'm, I'm, all, I'm, I'm all about learning and, you know, knowledge is power. And rocking with him, you know, has been like going to school, you know what I mean? We got a we got a few joints together. We about to drop, put something out. You know what I mean? We did a we did a couple little teasers here and there, but he got crazy beats, and you know we got we got we got some joints in the cut right now. Is there any new crew music coming? We always recording. Oh. You know what I mean? So we got stuff. I don't know, you know how we kind of sparing with releasing it. I know a lot of people are like yo, you need to just put it out, but we got joints and we always recording you know me and pep love we did the first light joint together so we got some music that we've been working on we've been touring doing different things so yeah the crew is you know we always working 
all he's making music. See, that's the thing. Niggas who's dope, you just if you if music's in you, you just make music. It don't necessarily have to be for something. It's just making it. Well, thanks for having. Thanks for stopping by. Good to see you, bro. Oh, it's gonna love be much fun. Respect, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, bro. Blue, we out. <laughs>